We have a guest speaker today, uh, Dr. Sehi Duran. Um, I've gotten to know her a little bit. She's, this is her third time, so she, this is, she's family now. Um, but it's been great to get to Yeah, it's good. Well, it's got some clappers here. Uh, it's good. Um, and so if you want to come up, Dr. Sehi, if you want to come up here, it's just been great to get to know her. Uh, and you're really going to uh, hear God's word today, and I pray that it speaks to your heart. Thank you. Good morning, family. All right. And this crowd this morning is awake. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, you know what? It's my third time. Yes. And it's every time I just feel like um, this is becoming a real family. Uh, Yesterday, for the first time, I actually took a car that our church let me borrow and took a little tour of all these downtowns. Every time I came, it was late night. Since my last visit, a lot of things has changed, and I can't wait to share with you as part of my sermon. But before we move on, can we just pray real quick? Heavenly Father, you are so wonderful. You're so beautiful. You are so good. God, thank you for bringing the family of God together in the house of our Father, of all nations, all tribes, all tongues, Lord Father. We just want to worship you. We want to let your name be praised. Holy Spirit, use me as a vessel to speak your word and get Sehi out of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's awesome. Your pastor, Pastor Ricky and Shay, seven years in this church. Can we give God the praise? Wow. Seven years of putting up with you. That's amazing. <laughs> they love you. They speak highly of you. And they get a one month off. I think they deserve more than that, right? But thank you so much for supporting your pastors to get real well-deserved rest. When they come back, they're going to come back all refreshed. For those of you that are joining online, welcome to church this morning. I know you guys have been going on the journey of a theme around grace. Grace is the gift from God that none of us deserve, but we get to have simply through faith in Jesus Christ, right? So today I do want to talk about a little bit that's kind of like a wrapping around that a whole theme, and it's about the fragrance of Jesus. But before I do that, I do want to kind of talk about the changes that happened that took place between my last visit and that was only two months ago. I don't know if you guys realize that. Maybe even less. <laughs> well, I am no longer a resident of North Dakota. Sorry for those of you who live there. I d- disappoint you, right? I'm a now a Texan. How do y'all? Yes, I'm practicing that. It feels so odd. New state, new home. Like literally, they just built this and new job. I am now serving at a Nelson University, which is one of the Assemblies of God in Waxahachie, Texas. Great school. And guess what? This is probably the biggest thing. Now, you know, I have three kids, but now I'm a mom five cats. This never happened in my life. 21 years of marriage. I was winning the whole time. No pets in the family. Somehow, just before we moved to Texas, a a stray cat decided to show up on my birthday party and she never left. She adopted our family. I'm like, okay, I think you guys are cool. You can be my family. We didn't know she was pregnant. Oh, boy, and beautiful little kittens. I can't even believe that I'm actually saying that. I'm like, Lord, what's happening to me? But beautiful, adorable cats. Now, I my commute from home is slightly longer in North Dakota. It probably took me maybe a minute on foot, literally leaving my home to the building of my school. Now I actually have to drive 10 minutes. Not too bad, right? But a lot longer than a minute, right? So what I do is that I usually call my family in Japan or Korea. Uh, I'm the only one living in uh, America. So my mom lives in Japan, and my brother and my dad live in South Korea. So it gives me plenty of time to call them on my way to work, and they call me on their way to work. Day and night is totally opposite, but somehow it works out. One day, my brother called me. Anybody has a brother or siblings? And when they call you, when they normally don't call you and they call you, I'm like, uh-oh. It's either good 
or it's really bad, right? <laughs> and my brother's two years younger than me. We have a beautiful relationship, but he called me one day. I'm like, oh my goodness, what's happening? Because he's super busy. And I picked up the phone. We're just catching up and having all this conversation. And then we cover all the bases and we get into this uh, topic of him asking this question of, okay, sis, how do you deal with difficult people? Oh, don't look at your neighbors now, right? How do you deal with difficult people? Now, he's a hairstylist. He does for like a pretty famous people, and he's really out there training other hairstylists and stuff. So I get that. And he's like, this generation is different, he says. I'm like, yeah, you think, right? I, I, I raised three of them, right? And they're beautiful kids, and they're amazing young people. But he was talking about how do we deal with difficult people, perhaps you have asked that questions in your own life. Maybe that's something that you go through in your own family. Maybe there's a coworker uh, that is causing this question to ponder upon. Or if you don't, if you can't think of anything, maybe you are it. Whatever it is, <laughs> we all have difficult people. Praise the Lord. Sometimes God place them in our lives for our own personal character building, and sometimes it's for theirs as well. But can we turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15? And that's going to be our main text, a text for the day. And I was telling my brother, you know, I don't know how you do it, bro, bro, but for me, I could not love people, difficult people, if it wasn't from the love of Jesus Christ. Like, I have to consciously decide to look at people through the lens of our God Father. Because everybody's made in God's image. Sure, there are people that are some annoying people. Sure, there are some people that are some angry, agitated people. However, they're all made in God's image, and they deserve to be loved. And I said, you know, if you just simply kind of try to look at people through how God sees them, maybe that will help. And my brother goes, I don't know. Maybe Buddhist is my thing. Buddhism. <laughs> it's like, he's just joking around. But he's like, that's really hard to love people that are unlovable. But I was telling him something about this. You know, there's a group of people. There's some people in your life that are meant to be there for the rest of your life. Some of them are spouses. Some of them your best friends, your children, or whatever, neighbors, your prayer warriors, your church families. But some of the people in your life, they're just passing through your life, right? And there are some amazing people that are encouragement to you. And there are some people that are really testing your faith, but they're pa passing through your life. But as they pass through your life, I was encouraging my brother to say, just remember, they leave with a little bit of you in their next chapter. Is that going to be a good side of you or is it going to be the ugly side of you? You get to choose. But not everybody's going to park in your life forever. But some people are blessed to rub shoulder to shoulder rub side by side a little bit and pass through you and whatever fragrance that you rub it off of them it's going to stick with them in their next chapter second corinthians chapter 2 verse 15 says this for we are to god the pleasing aroma of christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing now this is a book the corinthians is apostle paul wrote it to the church in corinth who are really used to worship, worshiping idols so this idea the concept the image of aroma is not foreign to them because they have burned incense to appease their gods before jesus christ right so he was Paul was using that language that was familiar to them and say, hey, the incense that you used to um, use to appease other God, you are that incense. And as your life burn for Jesus and be used for Jesus, he's going to love you. He's going to love this aroma that comes from you and out of you because it is beautiful to him and it's pleasing to him. Have you ever walked into your friend's house? And the first thing that you smell is a very distinct smell. Every house has a very distinct smell. Grandma's house has a very distinct smell, right? I'm like, oh, that reminds me of something, right? Like if you go to some people's house, and man, they smell like amazing Mexican food. Anybody like Mexican food lovers? Yeah, yeah. 
But then you smell the same onion-ish smell on people? Then it's like different story, right? You know it smells good if you know it's coming from food. Same thing with cheese. I love cheese, but if it's food, it smells great. If it's from people, it smells horrible, right? You know what I mean. But the aroma, whatever the aroma, they, why are you laughing so much? Are you, are you smelling something right now? <laughs> yeah. You understand the aroma, the concept of aroma. It, it's so strong that it permeates atmosphere around you. It changes views around you and perception of you, the culture of you. And it does have that powerful uh, testament to what God can do through you. We are God's aroma. Say to your neighbor, you're smelling good today. Even if they don't, say it, okay? (laughs) You're smelling good today. Hold your breath and say it. A verse before this, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 14, it says that God uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. Aroma of what? A knowledge of him. Aroma of what? A knowledge of him. So every time you go around and you rub shoulder with your neighbors and colleagues, what they should smell is not your lunch what you ate for lunch, what they should smell is a knowledge of Jesus. That when they meet you and see you and hear you speak, they should smell Jesus. They should know a little bit more about Jesus. What a huge responsibility, right? What an honorable, challenging responsibility. Is that smell going to be an aroma or is that smell going to be a stench. Now, once again, you get to choose what it's going to be. Today, I'm going to kind of talk about this fragrance of Jesus. Number one, I'm going to give you like four different pointers. Number one, how do we carry this fragrance of Jesus? How do we do it? Obviously, number one, you got to seek the source of the pleasing and lasting aroma. This bottle that I'm holding, it's beautiful, right? Uh, my husband got this from his recent uh, mission trip from Egypt. It smells beautiful. So if, if I ever want to smell like a queen, I use this. So this morning I use this. <laughs> but there's also actually my favorite uh, perfume is like Beyonce Heat Rush. And that's my particular. And anybody here like you stick with one perfume and like, like, that's it. You never try anything else. That's me. But my husband changed my life a couple months ago. I'm like, now I have options, right? And my daughter likes to go to Five Below. Do you guys have Five Below here? Yeah. It's an it's a affordable shopping place, best place to take your kids for birthday parties or grandma, grandpa's. If you want to buy something for your grandkids, that's a great place to shop at. My daughter loves to go to Five Below because she can buy some cheap perfume that smells so cute and she can have a collection of them because they're affordable right but the only problem is that there's alcohol based that it's just like you spray it and like 30 minutes later it's gone right the smell doesn't it's not the same smell but when you freshly put it on it's it's good but that's kind of a thing when you seek the source of a pleasing and lasting aroma like this one from the land of Egypt, it will last for days if you don't take a shower. Right? It will last for a long, long time. But if you go for a cheap source of perfume or cologne, it won't last, not even a few hours. Luke 10, we see this beautiful example of Martha and Mary, two sisters hosting the disciples and Jesus Martha is doing a great job. Any uh, oldest siblings here? Man, all the responsible ones, right? When visitors come, you're the ones that's picking up the shoes and cleaning and everything. And your little siblings like, no, 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 no. Like, you're going to do the job and I'm just going to watch you do your job, right? <laughs> that's like, in, in Martha's mind, Mary is doing that. And Mary's not cleaning the house. Mary is not preparing for food, not good, doing the hospitality things that most women are supposed to do in their context. And Mary, what she does is that she seats at the feet of Jesus. Very countercultural. Among men, she finds herself at the feet of Jesus and just learn and listen what he has to say. 
And Jesus says that's better than the gifts of hospitality because she, can, she is seeking truth. The aroma of Jesus that will last her lifetime. As a result, you know she was the first one to the tomb. She was the last one uh, to see Jesus. And, and she's always there at the critical moment of Jesus' life and ministry. And can you just imagine the impact of her life as a result of seeking the source of pleasing and lasting aroma? I love what Charles Burson says here. You are the fragrance of Christ that God loves to breathe in. <sighs> Can you imagine God sitting next to you and just breathing in your aroma? How beautiful your smell will be. The smile that you could bring to Jesus because you smell so pleasing to him through your lives, through your actions, through your words, and through your thoughts. Everything that you do, you do to honor God and praise him. (sighs) You smell so beautiful to Jesus. How do we do this? How do we get to the source? I encourage you, my friends, to declutter your pathway to your Jesus, whatever that it takes. What is it that in your life today that stops you from seeking Jesus as a source of life, source of pleasing aroma in your life? Is it that business of your schedule? You know, the world goes around without you. We feel like we want to feel very important. Like the world will crumble down without us. This church is standing still without the lead pastor. Praise the Lord. It's a healthy church, right? It's God's church. It, your life, it's God's life. It belongs to the Lord, right? So just let it go, relax, be in the presence of God. That's what it's all about. We were created to worship God through work, not just work. And the worship is a secondary thought. We are all created to worship him. Declutter your pathway to Jesus. And here's, how about this, another practical thought. Make an appointment to connect with him daily. Uh, My husband and I, we make appointments to go on Saturday brunch. Uh, I don't know if I shared this with you. This probably took place about three, four, five years ago. I can't remember. It's been a while. Uh, When my, my marriage was struggling, and we're both in ministry as ordained ministers, always arguing we cannot see things eye to eye it was just not everything was kind of falling apart but then my husband initiated hey how about we go on dates in my mind I don't want to be around you in the same room and I don't want to spend money on we food with you and spend extra time with you that's a waste of time and money in my mind I didn't say this but I was like okay sounds good and we did the first one was very awkward because, you know, we're, there's tension in the room. We're not really liking each other at that point. But then we started talking about, hey, what do you like? What's your future? Yeah, what's your goals? Like, what do you, like, we're starting to find, we're falling in love again. We're starting to date again. And we just loved it. And that, guys, is cheaper than a marriage counselor. Hmm? Right? So go on dates. It's never too early, never too late. Keep that fire. And that's the same thing. If you don't make an intentional effort to invest and in your life in your relationship with the lord this church you just made an appointment well done you made an appointment with jesus to meet with him and encounter him but can i encourage you that this is not the only day you're going to encounter with him can you imagine dating somebody you only see them once a week for an hour do you really love them right so you're going you're gonna to think about them all the time. You're going to call them and text them and look at their pictures and all those crazy things because you're in love with them. What are you doing to declutter your life and make appointment, make room to connect with Jesus on a daily basis because you are seeking the source of pleasing and lasting aroma? So number one is seek, seek it. Jesus is there. He's right here. You got to come get him. You got to come and get him. Number two, absorb his fragrance. Absorb his fragrance. We start to smell like Jesus when we spend time with him. Your demeanor changes. Your look changes. I mean, even your eyes, your tone changes. For those of you who came from a broken family, no Jesus upbringing, and then now you are in Christ, I can tell you, your family can tell the difference. 
you're not the same person. All of a sudden, things that used to know you no longer know you. The, the reaction, the rash reaction, the anger you used to, like, demonstrate, it's not there. You don't even care. You just feel like you just laugh at it and then just move on. And you start to love them somehow. It's, like, incredible transformation. Why? Because you start to absorb his fragrance. I remember the first time, uh, the first couple of months that I was dating my husband in South Korea. We met in South Korea in an international church. He was a worship leader. I fell in love with a drummer, right? And then I joined the worship team the next week. That's how you meet your spouse, okay? Join the worship team, all right? But make sure you, you can sing, all right? Make sure you can sing and play. <laughs> Well, we did that, and then we're just kind of like, it was a long-distance relationship, sort of, because I live in the capital. He lived in, in a city about an hour away, so I would travel, commute to church on the weekends. And then after service, we're just lingering, spending time, going to Pizza Hut, uh, walking around, just wasting time together. It was just great, right? And then about, like, right before the last bus stops, like, he takes me to the bus stop, right? And I remember we met during winter time, so like it's cold. And he had this big jacket and he just like wrapped me around while we're waiting for the bus. I'm like, he has a really wide shoulder and he's a whole lot taller than me. I'm like a little baby, mm, like, you know, <laughs> being hugged in there. And I'm starting to smell this amazing cologne. And that smell, it's like, it's ingrained in my brain, right? If I smell that from somebody, I'm like, oh. It brings me this sweet memory from dating my husband, right? It just takes me back to the immediate place. That, that something changes in you when you smell something so good and when you absorb that smell. Just like in clothes, you know, yeah, like when you put good perfume on and cologne on, it lasts forever. You know, you can smell that. It carries it where go wherever you go. Same thing. When you absorb this fragrance of Jesus, you can be on the streets, you can be at Walmart. You could be at a darkest place on purpose to shine the light, and they're going to smell that. They're going to smell this because you absorbed it. Do you remember the story from Exodus 34 where Moses spent this intense time of talking with God face to face on Mount Sinai? And he was pleading, pleading for the people. and like, hey, please do not destroy them. And he gives him the Ten Commandments, all those kind of things. And he has this incredible moment with God, Moses, the leader of the Israelites. And when he walks down from the Mount Sinai, they say that uh, Moses glowed. There's, he was radiant. Why? Is it because he somehow transformed? I doubt it. Why he was radiant is because he just absorbed the presence of God and he simply reflected the presence of God. When we absorb the presence of God, that's what comes out naturally. You don't even have to try to be like Jesus. You don't have to even try to smell like Jesus. When you absorb it and soak it in fully, when people squeeze you, that's what comes out. The Lord, the fragrance of Jesus, the aroma, the pleasing aroma of God. So what do we go from here? Pursue rich, deeper relationship with Jesus, not a superficial thing. Show up and soak it up, every bit of it. Do you know that today could be your last day on earth? Because the next second is not promised. We never know. Some of you guys have family members that you lost, the loved ones. Did you anticipate this? Some yes, but many don't, right? Just freak accidents. Life is short, but it means something powerful. How you live it has an eternal impact, lasting legacy. Number three, spread the fragrance of Jesus, which is so important. You know, a lot of us, this is probably the most typical part of our Christian journey. We like to go and seek Jesus because we need him. We all know him. I like to smell good. I like to be like Jesus. You go and get it. And I like to absorb it. You pour it all over. Like I worship. I come and fellowship and I serve. It feels good to absorb Jesus, right? Because it, it smells good. It feels good. It feels right. It is right. But then what we don't do right is like, now what? The difficult part is now to go out and spread it because we feel so comfortable just being in where we're at. This feels good that God loves me. 
It feels good that God hears my prayers. It feels good that God is healing me physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It's so good to be loved. But then what else? What else? is next like incense fills the room with the scent our actions and words should permeate our environment with christ's love i love this quote from saint francis of assisi and it says preach the gospel at all times when necessary use words Ooh. preach the gospel at all times when necessary use words Words means your action speaks louder than your words. You all know it's in the Bible. The devil knows God's word probably sometimes better than some Christians do, right? It's not about knowing God's word. It's about living it out. It's about walking it out. You can have the knowledge, but if, if you don't act upon it, if you don't spread it, if you don't share it, That fragrance of Jesus that you're absorbing and soaking it all in, it's just meaningless. If it's just for you, it's meaningless. Why did God save the Israel, the tribe of Israel, because they're so special? No, they weren't. They were chosen so that through them, all nations, the whole entire world will be saved. That's been the God's mission from all along, from the beginning. And why did God choose you to be a Christ follower? Is it so that you can be blessed, so that you can have a better job, so that you can have a good retirement fund later on? Is it because you, all of those things that about you, 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 you are part of God's plan, but you are not the end of it. It is through us, through you, that the whole world will be saved. The whole world will be saved. I cannot save the whole world, but you can be the fragrance of Jesus in your world. I can be the fragrance of Jesus and spread that fragrance in my circle of influence. And if all of us will do our job as a beautiful act of worship, as we are burning incense toward God as a pleasing aroma through our lives, wouldn't this be a beautiful, better world that we get to live in? We get to do this. How do we, where do we find the example? How can we actually live this out, spread the fragrance? It's in in there, in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42, 47. The first church record recorded in the book of Bible. I'm going to go ahead and read this, these five verses. 42. They, meaning the first church in the book of Acts, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Listen, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give it to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily to those who were being saved. People caring for one another. That's how people got saved. That's how God added people to the number of the family of God. You sharing your life with people. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that kind of relieving? Oh, good. I don't have to go to Bible college to be able to do this. Oh, God, I don't have to stand in in front of people and preach the gospel and be the speaker to do that. No, you don't have to do any of that. That's not the best way or the only way to do it. The best way really is through each of us living out the glass and see your heart, serving with people, sharing meals. Hey, how many of you guys love parties? Hosting parties, not the moms, dads do, right? (laughs) Having come together, inviting the neighbors, cooking, barbecuing, potluck. I love it. I, I especially love the potluck where you bring food from your own countries. Oh, I can eat all day. I can, I eat slow too. (laughs) I can eat all day, literally. It's so wonderful. That's how God adds to the body of Christ. Do you think you can invite somebody to your home for a meal? Do you think you can pray over people? 
Do you think you can share the resources that you have? It doesn't say how much or it doesn't have to, it doesn't say how little or how large you have to give. It says they were sharing. They're saying that everybody did not have any needs because everybody pitched in. Everybody. Do you think you have that ability to do that? Do you have that, that kind of love in your heart to be able to do that? To see the need of your brother and sister in the family of God. Guys, can I tell you, if we cannot do this in the family of God, how on earth are we going to do this outside of the family of God in the world? If we don't do this, if we don't love one another, if we don't forgive one another, if we don't pray for one another, if we don't help one another, serve one another, how are we going to do that in the world? It all starts here. So be intentional about your interactions with others, even with telemarketers. Can I tell you, I one time I picked up the phone. I know some of you guys, you know, telemarketers, that's their job, right? I know some of you guys may be doing that job. I'm like, oh, you know, those awful customers, right? But those, those people are human beings. Like one day I picked up a phone. I just, I was in the spirit of joy. And I was like, how are you doing? You know, like just asking their personal question. And they're like, thank you so much. You're the first one who asked me how I'm doing. And then this person started to talk about uh, his uh, vacation plan that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I mean, I don't even know. I think it was an AT&T call. I can't remember what call it was. But this person was like telling me all these personal stories and all the exciting things that was happening just because I asked, hey, how are you doing? To the telemarketer. Next time somebody calls you, spam call on your uh, phone, pick it up. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> There's your time to practice. And, you know, God keeps sending you those spam calls for you to live out that fragrance of Jesus, right? All right. <laughs> Share your testimonies of healings. Answer prayers and God's goodness. Can I challenge you to do this? We're all very good at a natural, like, hey, can you pray for me? I have need. Thank God we can come to God and come to the brothers and sisters and pastors in church and pray together. We need that. Yes, absolutely continue to do this. But can you do the part two of that is to testify. When God heals you, don't say, oh, look at it. God healed me. Cool. Go about your day. No. Why did God heal you? So that you can testify and spread the fragrance of Jesus that God indeed is real. His healing power is indeed active. And that's why God heals you. Right? It's not just for you to be healed. Oh, my little precious daughter and my, my favorite son, I love you. Heal. Bam. Go on. That's not it. It's so that you can testify. Answer prayers. That God just divinely provided something for you. Praise God for that. Tell people because through your testimonies, somebody will hear it. And like, man, if God can do that for my brother and sister, man, I serve the same God. I'm going to keep on pressing and praying because that same God that who provided and healed for the others, he can do it again for me and my family as well. God can do it. That's why we pray. That's why God answers prayers. That's why we are tasked to spread this aroma. Don't be stuck with that blessings with you. It's not about you. And now finally, number four, return to the source and repeat. Return to the source and repeat. This fragrance of Jesus, this, this um, aroma thing, the fragrance, my husband got me from Egypt. I love it. Make it. If I don't take a shower, it probably will last maybe five days. Is that like amazing? But I have to keep on applying perfume, right? Teenagers, please wear deodorant every day, okay? For the sake of the community, like <laughs> fragrance of Jesus, right? You want people to come to you, so. Those kind of things. You got to keep on reapplying. And I'm, I'm just being facetious. I have three teenagers, you know. Like I tell my kids, like, please, did you wash that clothes? Or are you wearing five days in a row, right? Okay. So we fragrance to Jesus. We got to keep applying. It doesn't last forever. What God did and Jesus did today through worship and message, man, if you don't come back to his presence tomorrow or this evening, 
It's not promised that you're going to be strong in your faith at that moment. You're going to have to come back. How many of you guys get fresh haircut every once in a while? Yeah, you need that, right? How many of you guys eat more than one meal a day? Why are you doing that? I mean, you ate. You ate one day, one meal. You, you don't need any food, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. For some of us, for survival. Some of us, for pleasure, right? So whatever the reason is, we have to eat food to continue to go on, right? We have to get a haircut so that you look fresh and, con- and clean. We've got to put on this fresh fragrance of Jesus so that we can smell fresh for the work of the gospel through us every single day. Don't rely on what God did on a Sunday morning to last for the rest of the week. It's powerful, but it's not going to last if you come back to it every single day and reapply, reapply, and reapply the presence of God and the fragrance of Jesus. You want to stay fresh and sharp for the gospel. John 15, 5, this is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, and it's this, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do? None of us want to live a meaningless life. Every one of us want to live a life of significance. I'm not saying making a big shot and be an influencer, a TikToker. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Every one of us want to make sure that our life count. Because all of us have only one life. We just don't know how long it will last. It's at the mercy of Jesus. But whatever that you have today, it's a gift from the Lord. And how you treat it, it's entirely up to you. I don't know about you, but I do want to remain in God every single day. This branch, I want to be the branch that is stick to the vine. Because without it, I will wither. I will die very, very quickly. But when I'm connected to Jesus, the source of life, the source of fragrance, source of wisdom, source of knowledge, source of encouragement, source of love, man, the life that I can live transformed and influenced others to live likewise. You are the walking billboard of Jesus. You are the only Bible that some people may read. So be careful how you represent Jesus out there. Fragrance of Jesus has the power to transform our lives, your lives, and the lives of others. Stay fresh. Has it gotten dull in your life? Has it gotten dull? So what are you going to have to do about it? You have to reapply. Fire it up again. Even when you don't feel like coming, hey, I don't, I don't know your story, but some of you guys had a really rough week this week. Congratulations for coming to church. Maybe you drug yourself here. You maybe didn't, you probably didn't feel like it because you had such a rough week, but congratulations. You're in the right place. You're reapplying the fragrance of Jesus because that's going to be the sustaining grace, sustaining power for you. And it's going to carry you through for your last lifetime. You just have to come back, keep on coming back to the Lord. I do want to leave with you some practical practical stages maybe you can add to the list this is not from the bible it's not thus says the lord just some practical guidelines number one if you want to absorb and spread the fragrance of jesus day after day i want to encourage you to do this count god's blessings and goodness every day I don't know, some of you guys journal. Maybe some of you guys say, oh, journaling is too feminine. Don't worry about it. Maybe just get your iPhone or whatever phone and take notes. What I'm saying is take mental notes to make you aware, because we forget a lot, right? Take a mental note to see and recognize the real blessings in your life, even if it's small. Some days I wake up actually literally praising God because I wake up to a beautiful sunrise. I'm like, oh, God, thank you. It's a beautiful day. Take a mental note. You walk by and you smell something beautiful. Maybe it's a delicious food or something. Or maybe you see somebody that, who's just bringing joy to your life. Oh, thank you, God. This one person that you place in my life today, I had a rough day, but what a joy. Take a mental note. Another, oh, wow, financial blessing. I, I totally 
really, really needed this financial blessing this week, or somehow God miraculously provided for you, don't forget about it. Take mental notes. Jot it down. During our family transition between North Dakota and Texas, there have been several, like, long list of miracles that happened. The timing of it, everything, we're buying a home, the closing date, all those things just came in perfectly, uh, perfect places. Along the way, we actually, one of our cars decided to just die. Oh, I know. And it, we just left it, abandoned in Oklahoma somewhere. We called the cop. Hey, I just want to let you know that this is our car. And we took out all the valuables. We're going to come back for it. Just want to let you know that car decided to not to resurrect. So <laughs> we just salvaged it. But the miracle in that, see, mental blessings. What kind of miracle and blessings can you find in those places, right? I mean, our car, and that's probably one of the better cars. My car, of course. My son drove, and then it just ended up dying. It wasn't his fault. It just died. So the blessing was it broke at the right place. If it was on a highway, man, it would have been very, very dangerous. It could have been worse. But it, it, it stopped and broke right as we were stopping at a stop sign. And my son was able to pivot and park in a parking lot where it used to be a, some sort of restaurant, but it was abandoned. So if it was a, some sort of business that was active, it would be so awkward. We have to tow it for somewhere else. But it was just an open spot, the blessing, right? So I jotted down, God. Thank you for this, for keeping our life alive, keeping us alive. Thank you that we were able to park safely in a parking place. It doesn't interrupt other people's lives and businesses. And third, when we went to church, the first week of our new church, we had a prayer list. And so we were sharing about our thing, and they've been journeying along with us. And somebody says, you know what? Somebody actually donated a car, and we didn't know who to give to. I think you were it. So I have a brand newer for me, right? Not a brand new car, but a new to me car that was a given to us at no cost. Yes. I was praying, God, just give me something that will drive from one place to the other. Like, I don't care what it looks like. I, that's the kind of God that we serve. Why am I saying this? Because God knows our needs intimately. And when I share this testimony and I'm spreading the aroma of Jesus, God did it for me. He can do it again for you. Just make sure that you give him the glory, right? God is so good. He cares about it. So count the blessings and goodness every day. Even in the bad moments, there are blessings. You just got to stand up and look up and look for it and testify it. Invite, number two, invite non-Christian neighbors or colleagues over for lunch or dinner. Oh, you don't know my neighbors. I don't know your neighbors, but who knows your neighbors? The Lord knows, and the Lord also knows that you belong to him. Hello, right? So you have this beautiful aroma of Jesus. Just take them out for, like, pay for their lunch, whatever, you know. Bring them a donut. It only costs you a dollar. Guys, you can do it. But it lights and lighten up their days. It speaks something to them that they, you care about them. Somebody looks, looks like they're having a rough day. Give them a, a little cup of coffee or something, their favorite drink. Just make them their day. Give them a little note. It doesn't cost you anything, but you can spread the fragrance of Jesus by simply doing that. And that leads to my third point, do a random acts of kindness to honor God. It's free. It's free to be kind. Amen? It's free to be kind. Yes, it might be hard to be loving to the unlovable, but were we loving when Jesus loved us first? Ouch. I know I wasn't, but he loved me regardless. And I, as a recipient of God's blessings and grace and love, hey, who am I to hold this back? What I tasted, what I experienced, somebody else deserves to hear it. Hey, guys, I want to invite our worship team back. But here, if there's anybody, I feel, if there's anybody, I don't want to miss this opportunity. If there's anybody in this room you feel like, man, I don't have that fragrance of Jesus. I do want to have that fragrance of Jesus. And I do want to build that relationship with him and maybe have a better life of just being fully absorbed in his presence. But I don't have that right now. But I do want that. 
If there's anybody in this room, would you just kind of let me know, raise your hand. If this is your first time coming back, or if it's like, God, this is my story. I do want to smell more like you. And this is my first time in saying, God, I do want you in my life as a fragrance. I do want to walk with you. I don't want to steal this opportunity of you having a transformed, brand new journey with you. And you're not doing this journey alone. alone. This church is with you. God's family is everywhere. So I do want to give that opportunity. Anybody in this room? I don't want to miss anybody. If you will just raise your hand. I, don't, I want to just recognize and celebrate with you your new walk with Jesus. And if there's anyone on, online, please let us know in the comment. Our church staff will make sure to follow up with you. Praise God. God is so good. Amen. The Lord is so good. Heavenly Father, we want to stay close to you. We want to seek you and absorb your fragrance. And we want to spread it out as far as we can as your vessel. So, Lord God, I pray that you continue to transform us as we continue to seek you. Holy Spirit, as you transformed us, please transform the lives around us. And that starts right here, right now. That starts in our own family. So, Jesus, Holy Spirit, change us, guide us. Holy Spirit, we worship you so much. Bless your people, Lord God. And as they go, help them to smell so beautiful. And that will attract people to your presence. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.